Hi, Uma. Welcome. Can you hear us, Huma? I think she's setting up. Yeah. <laughs> Can see you just put your uh, camera a little down. So you see, yeah, much yes, better. Yes, yes. Lovely. Can you Could hear you... us, uh, Huma? Okay. Maybe if you say something, we'll do the audio check for you. <laughs> we can hear you. Can you hear me? It's a little soft. Uh, maybe you have to just uh, either keep the mic close or speak up a little bit uh, so that. Yeah, it's a little faint. And now, what about. It's still a little faint, Uma, as you're coming and going. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, the closer it is, yeah, of course, then it's a little better. Is it better now? Yeah, it's better now. Maybe a little louder. Is it better now? No? Yes, I mean the others are actually booming in the ears. You, you are, you are still sounding a little distant. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I think. One moment. Can you hear me better now? Can you hear me better? It's a little better. Uh, I mean, do, do you have to use the headphone? I think sometimes the computer does a better job okay. of maybe you can give it a. Um, can you hear me better now? Oh, oh much oh, better. Yes. Much better. Welcome. <laughs> is it? Yes, yes. yes. This Lovely. is like, like you. Is it clear? Absolutely. Clear. No, is, audio, one moment. Can you, you hear me better? Much Perfect. better. Perfect. I can't hear you now. Oh, I oh. see. Your your voice is coming across clearly now. So. Just one moment. Just see, maybe the aux is plugged in. And can you hear me better now? Yes. Yes. Right. Now okay. it's I think both ways. Can you hear us? Yes. Oh, super. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, for joining. So we have. Uh, uh, we'll just give it a minute more. I think we have some participants, you know, joining in. So we'll just give a minute more. I think we have three minutes ahead of uh, three minutes after okay. three. Yeah. Okay, I think we will kick it off now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone, and uh, greetings uh, to all who have joined the webinar today. Uh, we will have more people joining it, but in the interest of time, we will start the webinar now. Uh, I am Rohit Prasad, the CEO of LPG India, and I'll be moderating the webinar today, along with my uh, colleague and panelist, uh, Sonali Sharma. So uh, let me just start by uh, sharing my you know, the document as a context setting document that I have, and, uh, and then we will, we will progress from there. So you know, the learning itself is a topic which is you know, something that is associated with a lot of positive aspects. It's about growth, it's about empowerment, it's about fulfillment. And the learning for senior citizen is a topic that doesn't get often discussed. Uh, we all know and believe in that there is no age limit for learning and growing. Uh, 
But when we see senior citizens and learning, uh, it is a subject that obviously needs more attention. There are many associations, as we said, we make with learning. And those are also the associations, word associations that we make with senior citizens who in their course of life make significant contributions. They lay the foundations, they build families, they build businesses, they build communities and the nation. So as we explore the topic together, let me extend a very special warm welcome to all our respected senior citizens who have joined the webinar today. We have with us uh, an extremely eminent panel. And uh, as we go through the webinar, and as I go through the speakers, I will be introducing you to them. Uh, they are all very distinguished people, but I'll be introducing them in short, and I hope I'll do justice to them. Uh, in terms of just the format itself, uh, I will do some context setting initially. Uh, this is more to lay the landscape of learning for senior citizens. Then we will request our expert speakers to share their perspectives. Uh, we have requested them to share it for 10 minutes. We'll, of course, just flag it at the eight minute mark for them to conclude in the next two minutes. And then we hope to have a reasonably long and enriching Q&A. And we would request all of you to put your questions in the Q&A tab. And uh, we would also request you to mention your name, location, and the name of the organization so we know who you are. And if you have any question directed towards a specific panel member, do mention this. And over time, we'll expect, we hope to have so continue the, you know, keep adding to the Q&A box and we'll be picking up the questions as we go along. We hope to make it very interactive and cover as many questions as possible. So before I begin the context, I just wanted to give a very quick introduction to HelpAge. Uh, we are an organization that's been for more than 45 years. Uh, our mission is to focus on the disadvantaged older persons. Uh, economically disadvantaged and also socially disadvantaged, which is growing in number. And the idea is to improve their quality of life. I mean, and the dignity is an important dimension of that. So as an so, as a organization, our belief, our vision is that all elderly, all senior citizens must have the right to an active, healthy, and dignified life. And through our different programs, but all our programs are essentially aimed towards three aspects. One is we work on the ground with communities of serving elders in need through our direct benefit services. We hope to work with the system, the government system, the private system, the health system in strengthening some of the approaches towards senior, senior citizens and also advocate for the rights, policies and the mindset change. We reach about 2 million directly, about 20 lakh directly through our programs. We have a national presence. We work with a number of state governments, policy committees, forums, and task forces. Uh, but an important aspect, the dimension that I want to emphasize is that we work with a range of organizations on a whole lot of aspects. And the social sector organizations, the senior citizen associations, the government, corporates through the CSR, that's essentially we do, all that we do is in partnership with others. Our programs are wide ranging. We work on healthcare, which is a very important need of the elderly. And that's something that we deliver through our mobile health units, vision restoration programs. Mental health is a recent addition, given the times. Age care, livelihoods, and advocacy and awareness. We work across the country. Intergenerational bonding and active aging are two pertinent aspects that resonate with today's <laughs> webinar. And we will cover some of the work that we do through our panelists, Sonali. Now, if I look at the lifelong learning itself, and, and we look at whether there is a case that needs to be made for lifelong learning, that we believe we are well past that. The case or the evidence or the research linking lifelong learning to active aging is well recognized. More research is being done, but it's well recognized. Now, all that of it links to longevity. We are living longer, and that's the amazing aspect of development. 
that at any point of time from birth to at 60, at 60, we are looking at at least 20 years of life ahead, which is far higher than ever before. And that's the longevity benefit, which is there for us to enjoy. But along with longevity, the long years, it's also about, as we say, years to life and life to years. What is the quality of life that individuals will have? And there, the aspect of active aging is, a, is an idea, a concept, a framework put by WHO and many others saying that optimizing opportunities for health participation in security, that is needed. Because if once you optimize the opportunities, and I'm stressing on the word opportunities, then you are able to fulfill the potential of those 20 years or of the extra years. And when we did the report on Bridge the Gap, we did a research with about 5,000 elders this 30 to 40%, some wanted to rest and enjoy life, which is, which is also very good. But 30 to 40% elders wanted to continue to work, volunteer, and learn. And that is the aspiration that the senior citizens have. So in our overall 14 crore senior citizen population in the country, it's 2023 number, not 2014. We are looking at the number rising to about 30 crores in 2050, the fastest that, one of the fastest that any country will do, which is move from one in 10 to one in five. And even in that journey, there's a large underprivileged section who are struggling for health, income, isolation, exclusions, that we know. And it's, it's a significant number. But even that number being there, you have, due to benefits of longevity, you have a very large number who will live those 20 years with a good health span and a an high aspiration for the second innings. So how are we responding to that? That is something for us to keep in mind. Now, when you look at literacy per se, and I talked about the disadvantaged older person, one of the disadvantages that we see, which comes out in the census, it comes out in the LASI data, that you have significant illiteracy amongst the 60 plus. If you have an average of 74% in the country, the literacy rate in 2011 for elders was 44%. And if you contrast that with the gender gap, the stark gender gap, then if the elderly male is at 59% uh, literacy rate, the women population, the elderly females were at 28%, half the number. That's the literacy, basic literacy gap that we're talking about, which is very stark. And obviously, the government of India had taken it up. More needs to be done on that space. But along with that, and we should not forget that, because that is a, a very core uh, area that needs to be made better, to be advanced, to, to bridge that gap. But along with that, there is this aspect about continuing learning. And the national education policy puts emphasis on both. And within the continuing learning, there are a number of areas, financial literacy, critical life skills, financial, digital, commercial, vocational leading to employment, creative and other interests. And it also talks about how the emphasis on community involvement, technology, infrastructure needs to be made, which is, which is the overall, the policy picture that we have. But if you look at lifelong learning, and I just want to set the context that it is a multi-dimensional aspect that is there. And what are the, some of the dimensions that I just want to highlight to everyone? Mindsets and attitudes. In many cases, we see that when an elderly 60 plus wants to learn something, if he wants to learn something, often their reaction would be, you know, it's too late for you to learn this. And there is almost a snubbing thing that the society does of killing that interest that somebody is generating. But even in many cases, we also see the senior citizens themselves uh, think that it is way too late for me to learn. And on top of that, we may have our societal view on seeing senior citizens as liabilities and not an assets. If you look at something in a negative way, you will not invest. And that's a mindset change. I think that is something that is very important. But along with that, you know, the policies and programs, which is how do we think about formal versus informal programs, non-formal opportunities? Those are very significant opportunities, but sometimes we get lost in the formal side of things. Technology as an enabler, we have uh, panelists who will be talking about that, but that's seen as a game changer. Intergenerational, 
elder for elders along with others for elders. And that is something that we believe in is very important, particularly in India where you have the second largest population and you also have the youngest, almost the youngest population in the world. Very few countries have this unique mix uh, of having both the demographic dividend as well as potential for having a demographic bonus. And then the transitions, you know, senior citizen, post-retirement, it's almost like falling off the cliff for many. It need not be so, but the age retirement preparedness is missing. And sometimes the reinventing system is missing. And that's something that we have to think about when you think about life from learning for senior citizens. But there are stakeholders. It is not only the senior citizens who are going to solve for it. So who are the stakeholders who are going to make the learning system? You know, we talk about the health system, we talk about the care system, we talk about a whole lot of other systems, but who's, who are we looking at the learning system and who are the stakeholders? Senior citizen associations, of course, and we have somebody who will be talking about uh, for, for, on that. We also have the uh, development institution and we are, you know, we have Dr. Huma will be talking about that. But UNESCO by far was the leader in putting out that uh, it, it concept out there. Then you have the nonprofit organizations like us, you have technology startups, you have the government ministries, and, and the policy frame that the government adopts is very important. I'll give you an example. You know, there's a Prime Minister Grameen, you know, the digital Sakta Abhiyan, which is a you know a scheme for digital training. The scheme itself stops at 60. We have written to the ministry to say there is life beyond 60. There are people beyond 60. You know, you should remove that age limit. But currently it is at 60. We are doing some work with the, as, uh, you know, uh, in the CSC Academy for on that. So there is a whole lot of stakeholders who have a stake. You have the corporates, you know, the financial sector, the technology players who have a stake in the particular sector, but they also have stake in all age, age groups. And I, I hate to say, but I must, you know, mention that often the senior citizens are not on the radar, not being thought of, not being thought of enough for sure. So that's something that the stakeholders all have to think about. But there are sparks of, I may say, hope, uh, some exciting stuff happening. Uh, and, and we see that and we did some best research and I just wanted to highlight some of them here for you. As, as basically thought starters, as, as sparks for us to build on. Uh, Deccan College, and we, we invited the vice chancellor, I think he, he may join, uh, he had some, uh, some, something come up, but they started something called Golden Hours. A university started something called Golden Hours aimed at senior citizens. The Mahatma Gandhi University in Kerala started a global program for the 55 plus. Not many universities do it, some do, and we also have the TIS Center for Lifelong Learning. If you look at some of the international experience, some amazing things were happening. You, you know, there's a university for third academy, but interestingly, Hong Kong has something called Elder Academy. And this is a government scheme which is aims to have these Elder Academy in secondary institutions as well as higher education institutions. It's fantastic, it's, it's, it's amazing that something like that is, is there not for the last 10 years and it's functioning and is delivering. Then you have you know, tech startups who are coming up and get set up and we are fortunate to have uh, Ashwini join us today. But you have others as well who are trying to bring senior citizens uh, you know, together for, for volunteering, for connecting to opportunities, jobs, learning opportunities. And then some work that we are doing in this space is aiming both digital for rural elders, and we are very big on digital safety because we believe that both literacy as well as the navigating capability is very important to them. So with, with that, we, that's the basic setup I wanted to do. And I would now like to do a very short uh, poll and I uh, would request all the participants to just give your reaction, your sentiment. What do you think uh, would be, uh, you know, the, the the state of affairs as far as learning is concerned. So this poll is there. There are two questions. Uh, we are basically saying, do you believe options for lifelong learning for senior citizens are easily available? And very simple three choices. 
not available, somewhat available, easily available. And the second question we are asking is that, what do you think will be the biggest drivers of change to encourage lifelong learning for senior citizens? Will it, just one you have to choose, all of them are important, but in, in your view, what do you think will be one, one game changer or big change that will happen? Technology, initiatives by universities and higher education institutions, if they think of reaching out to senior citizens, uh, government action, policy change, resource allocation, or engaging the youth. So we will we will give it thirty seconds for all participants to uh, you know put their words. You just have to click on the option that you think is the most uh, interesting one, and then uh, we will uh, the most relevant one that you think, and then we will have the poll results to understand uh, where what all our participants at this webinar are thinking. Again, I uh, encourage all of you to just choose your option and, and go ahead. So if you haven't done it yet, yeah. make your choice and, 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 and press on the relevant the most appropriate answer you think it's okay. not coming sir it's 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 not it's option, not option even if you press on this option also it's not coming i see it's not uh, it's not available for us mr for the, Sridhar. for the host oh, and uh, panelists yeah. you cannot uh, mr Sridhar. Mr. Shida, yeah. you are not able to vote, but hopefully others are. <laughs> okay. uh, we will, we will of course hear your thoughts very soon. Okay. <laughs> I, I realized that Rohit, when I wanted to press on technology, being <laughs> <laughs> so no. I think we will, we will uh, stop now. And uh, Vishnu, if you, if you are able to publish the results, okay. Okay, that's that's uh, that's interesting for everyone to see. I think uh, the not available and somewhat available are are something as a reaction, and and clearly the not easily available for sure. I think that's that's a reaction, and uh, I think the technology platforms and the government action is probably yeah. two of the most biggest popular dri drivers that uh, people feel, although. Uh, my vote is still on the educational institutions, and I'll I'll come back and uh, you know talk about more if I get a chance. But thank you, thank you so much, and I think that's the that's the context we want to to put forward. You know, in just in summary, the case for lifelong learning is well recognized. You know, we don't need evidence for it; it's there. It has huge potential to contribute to active aging, healthy, and active life in later years. And that is something that we all recognize, we appreciate. However, we don't see that much attention on the subject. We don't see it center stage in discussions. And, and that's where uh, the, the thesis of this webinar is that uh, collective, it's our collective obligation to build the learning ecosystem for senior citizens. And we do it in a way that's relevant, it's easily accessible, use all the technology, infrastructure, the full community system. And, and, and that's the core question that we want to reflect on in this webinar. What can be done to realize the full potential of lifelong learning for senior citizens? And that's the essence of what we want to go, uh, you, know, uh, you know, after this webinar, go with some ideas, some suggestions, some recommendation that we will, we will take forward. So with that, uh, uh, you know, thank you very much for listening and and uh, and in the and the uh, the context. Uh, this is just based upon some quick uh, search that we did, and we wanted to uh, share with everyone. So now let me just uh, you know go across to our uh, first speaker, uh, Mr. Uh, Sagaram uh, Sridhar, Mr. S. Sridhar. Uh, Mr. Sridhar, uh, it's an honor to have you, sir. Uh, 
Mr. Sridhar is an eminent and uh, highly respected leader. He's currently the national president of All India uh, Retired Railway Men's Federation, AIRRF. And he's also the vice president and council member of All India Senior Citizens Confederation, ISCON. This is an organization that represents the interests of uh, senior citizens, both federations, they represent interests of senior citizens. They are national level organizations and they promote welfare of members, they address concerns and challenges, they enhance social awareness, they network, they do research and advocate the interests of the members. We are honored, sir, to have you Thank with you. us today. Uh, you represent the senior citizens voice at the webinar today. And uh, over to you, sir, for sharing your thoughts uh, as we as we shared with you, uh, you know, the, the, you are part of an SCA, uh, lead a senior citizen association. So we would love to hear what you think the senior citizen associations can play a role in advancing lifelong learning. But also you and the other senior citizens that you interact with, what's been their experience? What are the challenges that they see? And also what you think that needs to be done in the in the setup that we have to look at action points on day forward. Over to you, Mr. Sridhar. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, good evening, everybody. At the outset, I congratulate Helpage India for organizing this seminar on lifelong learning for senior citizens. So this is the first webinar which is being conducted nationwide in this year. I, I am associated with Helpage India for last eight years after my retirement. I worked in railways as a chief office superintendent. In the year 2016, after my retirement, since I was involved in the trade union activities for 40 years, as long as I am in railway service, I was working for the trade union organization. So I have been asked to work for senior citizen organization and also the pensioners organization of Indian Railways. In this context, I would like to tell everybody that we started digital literacy program in the year 2016 itself. We have an organization, Anand Bhak Senior Citizen Forum. There we have conducted digital literacy program in the year 2016, it was the first digital literacy program conducted on a request made by us by Helpage India organization. Uh, the then uh, head of the Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, uh, Mr. Raza Mahmud was there. He was the head of the organization. Then after that, we have conducted a lot of digital literacy program. Life is a continuous learning process. So we believe that senior citizens are more because of a pandemic. There was a gap of two years. Senior citizens were unable to move from their house and a lot of disturbance. All senior citizen associations were closed and the activities have come to stand still. After the relief last year, again, organizations started functioning, senior citizen organizations, and the monthly meetings are being conducted in the organizations. In Hyderabad, we have an ASRA committee and uh, about 200 senior citizens are there. So they are working parallelly with uh, colony committees, colony welfare associations. Senior citizen organizations are parallelly working with the colony committee organizations, uh, sharing their infrastructure, whatever office accommodation or hall and other things. So in this connection, I would like to tell since I am associated with All India Railway Men Federation for the last eight years. So I have traveled most of the places in India. I have interacted with a lot of people. We are 18 lakh railway pensioners. Out of 60 lakhs in India, we have total central government pensioners are about 60 lakhs. Out of that, our share, railway pensioners share is more because we are 18 lakhs spread over in the entire network of Indian Railways. Most of the people are settled in uh, 
urban areas and some people are in rural areas also our pensioners here as far as learning is concerned see when the technology is increasing day by day new technology and we are getting accustomed like use of mobile phone i remember during my childhood there was not even a landline phone in an, in 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 the near by my house so from landline to we have switched over now because of technology every see almost all the senior citizens uh, have got accustomed in using the mobile phone whatsapp internet and other uh, facilities whatever is available to them even we were not having television or radio in those days after the introduction of radio we we switched over to television now advanced technologies of communication technologies are coming up because of the advancement in technology we were made to get accustomed it is a learning process because most of the senior citizen they take advantage of their grandchildren or children and they depend on them learning so instead of depending on their family members or grandchildren we thought our senior citizen organization will conduct some digital literacy program on monthly basis not only on mobile uh, apps use usage of mobile phones like i remember in 1916 we have conducted one digital literacy program with the help of uh, our uh, sham kumar uh, advocacy officer of help page india for exclusively for women women we have conducted one digital literacy program for booking of this uh, caps ola uber caps so ladies especially housewives they were not knowing how to book uh, ola or uber cab wherever auto or any such thing transport system when they want to go somewhere then with the help of this this digital literacy program could help most of the women especially housewives of course employees those who are employed they get using they are get accustomed in using the uh, this uh, app of uh, transport system now uh, housewives they got we have taken survey of some people we have interacted with some people some housewives also then some of the housewives i can say out of uh, 10 out of 10 6 people are utilizing the facility of in the on 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 after after one or two years after undergoing the uh, program so not only booking the cabs and other things also like uh, using the facilities of like in our railways as far as railways is concerned our uh, we are going mass digital digitalization because the government of india has introduced that uh, uh, digital literacy platform and uh, because of this uh, digitalization in indian railways uh, our entire hospital management systems hospital management systems uh, we have we are having some 2500 doctors and 125 railway hospitals and uh, we have got some uh, uh, pensioners 18 lakh pensioners are almost all the pensioners are beneficiaries of medical facilities so they have been issued with one a unique medical identity card and uh, also in hospital management systems uh, they have uh, launched one application mobile application also so we used to carry the books uh, case books our case whatever patient every patient will have some books books containing their data about their treatment uh, diagnostic uh, reports and other things earlier reports and all these things so now they need not carry the books because they we got some uh, hundreds thousands of people uh, using the uh, application that is known as hms railway application hospital management is systems railway applications not only that even even hrms also we get some privilege of uh, availing the uh, post retirement complimentary pass even for availing the post retirement complimentary passes also nowadays like paperless tickets as now you are all aware that when we travel we used to purchase the uh, printed card tickets in olden days after printed card t- tickets computer is computer tickets have come now there is no printed tickets paperless ticket so we get uh, our ticket journey ticket on the mobile itself so like that even for our complimentary pass also we don't depend on getting the manual paper pass instead of that we avail the pass facility on using the mobile application itself so we get pass and reservation everything on that so we are continuously pensioners educating the pensioners in conducting the uh, digital uh, awareness programs not only digital awareness program we conduct we have conducted lot of uh, awareness programs on this maintenance and welfare of parents and senior citizen act 
So Maintenance and Parent Welfare Act, National Policy of Older Person, most of the senior citizens are not aware. When I joined in the year 2016, uh, I used to interact with some people. Then everybody was telling they are not aware of the uh, provisions contained in the Act. And we started conducting awareness program. Our, we have an organization known as Telangana Senior Citizen Confederation. I was secretary for two years there. Uh, I was initially a secretary at Anandbagh Senior Citizen Forum. Even now, for the last year, I am continuing as a secretary of one organization, local organization here. And after that, I started working for All India Senior Citizen Confederation. Since I am interacting, I am going to almost all the states. I travel every month, 15 days, I'll be traveling, I'll be going to all the states. I came across a, a senior citizen who are uh, above 100 years of age. In my organization, in my railways, pensioners, there are out of 18 lakh pensioners, we have 6,000 uh, pensioners who are 100 and, 100 and above years of age. I have come across a person who is of 120 years of age. Now he is no more, but I interacted with him. He was 120 years at that time, last last before year. Then I have come across, because generally uh, we, we felicitated them uh, on the uh, occasion of uh, uh, World Elders Day, uh, then World Elders Abuse Awareness Day. We conduct a program on World Elders Abuse Awareness Day and also uh, International Day for Older Persons. So we felicitate some of the uh, senior most super senior citizens on the day of this uh, World Elders uh, uh, International Elders Day. And not only that, we conduct 17th December as a National Pensioners Day. Even on the day of National Pensioner Day also, we invite some super uh, senior most super senior citizens who are above 90 years of age. We interact with them. They come to our place and they accept felicitation. They also give their strengths. In my organization, where I am working, All India Retired Relevant Federation, I have four working presidents, East, West, North, South. All the four working presidents are above 85 years of age. They are super senior citizens. I have got my one of my working president, one Mr. Godbole from Mumbai. He is of 96 years of age. So they are all involved in the day-to-day -day activities. They are very healthy because of their involvement in the organization. What we have observed is what we want to communicate to all the senior citizens who have uh, participated in this webinar is that as long as we are active, we are active and involving in day-to-day -day activities. When I was in service, railway service. Mr. Sridhar, sorry, just two to... minutes. I, I just yeah. cutting in just to remind you the eight okay. minute mark. <laughs> okay. We have actually over nine minutes now. Thank okay. you. Okay. Okay. One minute. Carry on, carry on, yeah. Mr. Sridhar. Just no, to is... Okay. Here, yeah. see, when we interact with uh, some super senior citizens, at, as I am telling about my working presidents who are about 85 years, uh, they are continuously working. They are, as long as they work, it is a learning. They go on learning every day. They, they come across new things. They read books, newspapers, not only newspapers, now whatever TV channels and other uh, mobile apps. They use mobile apps and mobile uh, activities. They communicate with a lot of people. So they are very healthy. They are physically fit. Uh, they are having a long life. They live long life. People who are very active after 60 mm -hmm. years, so as far as I am concerned, I was working uh, eight hours duty and two, three hours organization work. Uh, almost uh, 10 hours I, am, I was working when I was in service. After mm -hmm. my retirement, I started working for 10 hours, 12 hours. Uh, every day, I work uh, 12 hours a day. Morning from morning, six o'clock, we go for morning work. We interact with senior citizens. Morning also, we have a sitting. We interact Mr. with- Shredha, sorry, citizens. I'll have to ask you to conclude okay. just a little tight of okay. time. Okay, okay, okay ma'am. Now, what we do is that, uh, what is our suggestion is that, what we feel, so government have to provide uh, some more infrastructure and policies. See, we are mm. not, uh, though we are equipped with the technology, technology is available in the market. It is not reaching the senior citizens. There is a gap between the government, there is a gap in the government policy. So it is, I feel that it is not reaching the uh, common man because of the uh, there is little shortfall in the infrastructure. Though some Helpage India, some organizations like Helpage India, it is working uh, for the senior citizens' welfare for the last so many years, 40, 40, 48 years. But though I am associated with 80 years, what I could observe, senior Helpage India is only the organization who is working for senior citizens' welfare 
as on date it is my personal observation even from organization side also since we are involved with help page india in conducting hundreds of digital literacy program not one or 10 or 20 everywhere we have conducted we have organized one national policy national uh, program on digitalization and transformation in indian railways there also we have got a presentation of uh, bank people have given one awareness program digital uh, program and uh, help page india also have given their presentation on the uh, cyber uh, security of the uh, bank accounts and other things how to protect our bank account and also the uh, mobile uh, transactions uh, through this uh, 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 program like we have conducted lot of programs in uh, uh, in near future we expect that help page india will coordinate with us now we are going for this digital life certificate so earlier every pensioner has to give life certificate once in a year in the month of november november only the one month for all the pensioners to generate life certificate nowadays instead of manually going to bank now it has to be a uh, on face there online generation of uh, life certificate and also in that also advanced technology like using the uh, this thing app uh, so people can sitting at home and they can generate the life certificate using the biometric uh, 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 equipment so biometric equipment our people are doing door delivery service for super senior our volunteers uh, they are going to door to door for super senior citizen and they are extending this services of generating the uh, digital life certificate now because of face identification technology has come in the month of november uh, all the pensioners have to 60 lakh pensioners have to give the Uh, life certificate Thank and you, from sir. september october onwards it starts so uh, we want cooperation from help page india so that we will involve more and more senior citizens in this learning process learning is a continuous process as i told you so thank you very much thank for you, giving me this opportunity thank you thank you thank, thank you mr shridhar thank you so thank much you. i think uh, some of the points that you made about uh, being active uh you know post retirement how that makes a difference to the quality of life i think the aspect about technology is something that you emphasized a lot that it makes a difference in somebody's day to day life given how the technology space is changing uh the aspect about digital mediums in entertainment in accessing facilities in doing day to day work be it booking cabs or you know accessing or submitting the life certificate and also i think you made the call for a special program a special emphasis uh, non profit organizations others will do some supporting role and you know they they are of course very welcome to do that but i think uh, government uh, the the as ask that you put on the table of the government taking the digital literacy or digital uh you know a, a learning program and having something special for the senior citizens that will allow it to reach the senior citizens at scale so thank you very much mr shridhar i really you. appreciate the thoughts and points please stay around we have some we questions also for you as we go along <laughs> but, <laughs> but but given the aspect about technology let me introduce uh our next speaker uh, ashwini uh now uh ashwini is an accomplished uh, senior professional uh with more than three decades of rich experience leading business growth in banking and financial services sector he is the managing director business development and partnerships in at get setup which is a technology driven online community for older adults to learn share and socialize i'm sure he will talk more about it and 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 give us an a uh, perspective into the organization he drives partnerships and growth in india before get set up ashwini was the managing director of the financial institutions coverage at barclays investment bank he and he led fundraising efforts and m&a <laughs> activities ashwini is also a fitness enthusiast and looks like that uh, he looks like a you know fit person who actively participates in marathon and is interested in team building through sports tracks high running and cycling so welcome ashwini and uh, i invite you to share your thoughts and perspectives on as you heard technology seems to be the one of the big levers big change drivers that everybody is expecting to play in the lifelong learning space 
So your experience of having this set this up platform, your experience of how senior citizens are interfacing with it, what challenges that you see and what are your ideas on more broadly uh, the role technology can play in, in advancing lifelong learning for senior citizens. Over to you, Ashwin. Thank you, Rohit. Uh, I guess I can be heard. So <clears throat> I'll kick this off and uh, to thank you guys again to giving us a platform and more importantly to help Edge to actually pull the entire banner of lifelong learning. You, you said it in your opening statement that it, it is an important aspect, uh, less spoken about uh, and definitely needs to be called out. So actually uh, proud to be part of a group over here, which is actually calling it out. And the need of the R is, 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 is actually only growing. Uh, you, you refer to the UN report. It was, it was, it was in 2017 that the government of India was submitted with that report, which exactly spoke about the numbers that you initially opened up with by saying that one in five, by 20, 2050, one in five people will be, will be out there seniors. And that actually got uh, the founders, uh, three founders of Get Set Up, uh, and some of us who've been associated with in various ways, both at a personal level, uh, dealing with our own households, our own relatives. And I, as Mr. Sridhar also said, dealing with uh, lots of our people around it, that there is, there, is a, there is a tectonic shift happening in the population out over there. And that made us think that how can technology be an enabler? Actually, all the three founders of Get Set Up are, are tech, tech background. So they, they, they got thinking, and that's how Get Set Up came up to be, uh, using technology as an enabler. And if you look at any sector all around uh, the world, uh, I come from banking, so whether you look at payments, uh, Mr. Sridhar comes from railways, so you look at the ticket list uh, or, or, or the technology using, uh, you know, to move, move, moving paper out. So it's technology is an enabler, and that's what we are using and using it as a lever to reach out over there to, to, to people who are all seniors are still uh, very, very active. And we don't call them seniors. We actually call our members and anybody associated with us as older adults or active ages, because I think for all of us, what's important is, is as you, as you peak your, peak your earning life, of, of life will be there is is all of that needs to be fully engaged and active to lead a healthy life and when we grew up all around it was always about about uh, a learning mind is a growing mind uh, i think i think as you grow into your in, in, into your teenagers uh, a learning mind is a healthy mind is and that's how that's how we've kind of curated the whole platform so i'll actually start sharing my screen it shouldn't be too long a presentation but actually just give everybody a, a color of what we are doing. We are very young. We're just about two years old in India. Uh, and globally, we are about little over three years old. Uh, and, and, and our learnings have been, have been very fast across and, and implementation has been pretty good. And that's how, that's how we you know, are calling out that keep your, keep your, keep your mind uh, alive, learning always and empower. And that is one of the things about empowerment that we are, we are allowing our members to actually connect with each other as a peer-to-peer -peer model. And let me just actually put the screen up while I, while I, while I do that. Sorry, I just uh, moved it away. So while I do that, I'll just continue and, and talk about the fact that, you know, when, when, when Get Set Up got created, we put it on, 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 on uh, four core values. And a couple of them, you picked it up in your opening conversation. One is empowerment. The other is being hospitable. The third is, is, is being, being bold. And a fourth is being curious. And if you just look at it, as long as, as long as the four are going hand in hand, you can't go too wrong and fall off the cliff, which is the part of the, part of the, part of the opening statement you made that we tend to fall off the cliff. And that's because the avenues, and that's because the changing demographic, what elders were 10 years back, we are no longer... Uh, going to be our parents are no longer our grandparents. It means what our grandparents were and are, our parents are not going to be there. Personal example, my father celebrating his 81st birthday right in the middle of Serengeti right now. And he did his 80th birthday right in the middle of the ocean. So it's, it's, it's those inspiration that brought all of us together to create you know, a technology-based platform to scale and make people learning and empowerment together at the same time. So lifelong learning for active ages is what we believe in. 
What's Get Set Up? I already mentioned we are on a mission to combat social isolation and enhance digital literacy. We offer various topics. Digital literacy is only, only the ena enabler, but we offer across health, wellness, finance, anything that allows empowerment to, I think earlier you only or, or Mr. Shira said that, that ensuring that you don't have to depend on anybody else to do your own stuff. And that's, that's powerful enough for them to keep it, keep engaged. Going on to, you know, what we do, I think this, this is the slide that I was earlier mentioning. What, what is the 60 year old that wants today? They want to stay active. They want to make connections and they want to be independent, which is the thing I just said. They want to be independent, but with the community. And that's the strongest feeling. As long as you're socialized, you're part of a community, you're learning together. In our, on our platform, the service provider or the creator and the consumer are from the same cohort. It's not a younger person. It's not you know, somebody who's just uh, not being able to empathize. So therefore, there is an empathy. Therefore, there is, there is a situation of, of non-judgmental environment we create on the platform to ensure that people are, can trust trust each other, learn from each other. The importance of designing technology for the aging population. Why did this become important? You know, we already know what the stats are, so I won't spend too much time over here. But the last part, the last point is very important that with advances in healthcare and technology, people will live longer, you mentioned that. Adoption of technology will only help all of us to live a healthier and longer life. It promotes independence and therefore social connection and quality of life. So what we're doing is we're moving people away from the situation of feeling lonely and alone because as we grow, our social bonds start to wither away. Till your working life, your social bonds are forced on you by the environment, which is either school, college, work life, work professionals. But then you don't have to fall off the cliff as long as you're curious, bold, willing, and are ready to be empowered. And that's what we've seen from our own community, which has grown in the last two years to number of people who are enjoying the platform. So this is a quote one of our founders keeps using, is that together learning, socializing, being engaged can help the people. I think it's self-explanatory over there. What are the benefits of technology? Now, what we do on the platform is there are online classes, there are virtual interactions, they reduce social isolation. Now there are many platforms out there over there which give you the learning, but the interactivity is important. Socializing is part of it. That interactivity in a non-judgmental environment makes you feel empowered. You feel like asking the question, you feel like learning, and therefore the hesitation that earlier you mentioned, the hesitation of people to, to, be, to be called out that, oh, these are, there are mindsets and attitudes that you're too old to learn. No, we break that. We break that by making it a peer-to-peer. -peer. We break that and making it a trustworthy environment for them. Similarly, other benefits, being expanded connection with family, friends, and the community at large. You don't have to physically, we all know how, you know, Mr. Shira said that a lot of retirees are in urban situations, they're far away, they move away. We're trying to say, I saw the survey earlier, people are saying that education institutions, they all can scale up using technology. Because as people retire or move on to the next phase of their life, they move to smaller towns, cities, or wherever, the, you know, wherever but they're no longer always with family or no longer they're always with the old connections which they had during work life. So all that is changing. They are, they are in the mood to be independent, enjoy the best years of life, responsibilities are done more or less, and live their own life, the best years of life. That's what we're allowing on the platform. Increase knowledge to improve mental and physical wellness. Very, very important. Active mind is a healthy mind. Keep it engaged. Ashwini, I'm sorry, physical. two minutes. Just, uh, yep, no uh, problem. I'm almost done. Thank you, Sonali. So uh, almost done. I think, I think the other part is, is that with the education that which is getting imparted on the platform, you can reduce the cost of care through this education and through the platform. So it's basically talking about using technology as enabler. This is just some of the testimonials. I think I'll just skip this. We've been able to reduce isolation. We've 
ensure improved physical and mental well-being, active lifestyle, follow passions. So I think overall, in summary, the platform is ensuring that we lever the potentials of it using technology, reach out to the farthest corner. India is the largest data consumer. India has the cheapest mobile <laughs> rates. What else do we have? We have the best tailwinds. So we don't have to have a large population out there which creates a burden on the healthcare, on the government policy. We just use the enablers. And yes, the one in five that is going to happen in, by 2050 need not be the what one in 10 were as of now or are one in 10 as of now. I'm done, Sonali. So I guess that's the last slide. If anybody wants to get in touch, do whatever. Numbers are there. Websites are there. Rohit's putting up some interesting thing along with Sonali. So always there to help you out to you know build partnerships and just grow the community out there. Thank, thank you, you much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ashwini. I think that was uh, very fascinating. And I think uh, you know what you're doing with Get Set Up, I think it's exemplifying it. It's bringing out the power of the technology uh, and uh, you know the the impact it can have on the senior citizens' lives. I think Mr. Sridhar talked about the technology is something you know embedded in our lives now. I mean, there is not a choice not to embrace it. <laughs> it it's it's a must do to embrace it and. Uh, of course, there's a lot of digital literacy that needs to be done to so enable the senior citizens. But we see that drive in this, you know, our seniors and and the, and the lovely word active agers uh, who will who will reach out and make the most of the technology that is out there. So, you know, hearing Mr. Shridhar and uh, Ashwini, you you know, we have. I thought we will cover a couple of questions at this point. And uh, Mr. Shridhar, the one question that you know we we see in in our Q and A box is that there are various uh, areas, sir, that you mentioned that you know that senior citizens need to uh, you know you know get better on. They need to be more aware of. And you mentioned about the maintenance act. You mentioned about you know basic you know, accessing the government schemes and fulfilling the process of it. Um, do you see one or two areas that if you were, you know, in discussion with the government or your discussion with uh, Ashwini, for example, uh, and you would say these are two or three important priority areas that the senior citizens uh, definitely need more, uh, you know, more attention, you know, that provision of those should be important. So anything that is in your experience, yes, sir. With working One with is, uh, yeah. uh, in terms of uh, provisions contained in the Maintenance and Welfare of Senior Parents and Senior Citizen Act, every district should have one old age home. Old age home, every district should have one old age home. Mm -hmm. Like we we are having uh, uh, 700 districts in India, 700 and odd districts in India. So hardly, hardly old age homes are, uh, not even uh, 20, 30 old age homes are there, uh, which are being run by the government. So, mm -hmm. as per the Act provision, uh, central government notified by the uh, central government, every district should have an old age home, but it is not being implemented. And now, they, this is uh, most of the uh, senior citizens are feeling that they are uh, deprived of the uh, old age homes and mm -hmm. they are paying a huge amount in the uh, private uh, old age homes and uh, they are uh, put into financial hardship. And mm -hmm. uh, second thing is health problem. You see, mm -hmm. those who are especially ladies, women, women above 85 years of age. So as long as their husband is there, she will be happy. And after the demise of her husband, once she, she reach, so her services are being utilized in the house as a maid servant. Mm -hmm. So once if she crosses 85 years, she will have some uh, eye problem, vision problem, and uh, uh, she can uh, shivering problem, neuro problem, and other problem. Uh, healthcare, healthcare is the uh, priority, first priority for the senior citizens. Though government is uh, providing certain facilities for the senior citizens for getting, because as as far as pensioners are concerned, our retired employees are concerned, they have got some medical facilities. Ordinary person, as we are talking about, 14 crore senior citizens. Out of 14 crore senior citizens, hardly one or two crores will have some insurance or something like that. They depend on the children. Mm -hmm. Most of the senior citizens have to depend on their children for the medical facilities. They are mm -hmm. they should not be at the mercy of the children 
for getting some cataract operation or some other knee surgery or something like that see mm-hmm. what we wanted is that government should concentrate more on the uh, health facilities for the senior citizen and old age homes also because in nowadays old age homes are required for the because lot of people i have, what we have observed is my experience uh, i have i have collected a data of uh, uh, directory of old age homes in that we have visited some old age homes because we fund we senior citizen organization provide some funds voluntary organization will some provide some funds to the senior citizen for instance we have visited one old age home uh, they are not having a washing machine see people above mm-hmm. 80 years they for uh, uh, for uh, clothes and other things day to day affair they should have some washing machine mm-hmm. uh, we have provided one washing machine to the old age home and we have visited one old age home drinking water was a problem there was no proper drinking water then arvo plant was provided like mm-hmm. that senior citizens are uh, organizations have to come forward not only senior citizen organizations government also government we have discussed time and again with the uh, officials also Thank at you. various level various levels so these mm-hmm. are the three areas what i observe is that uh, old age homes medical facilities for the senior citizens thank you thank you, thank you mr shridhar i think these are extremely important areas uh, <clears throat> that you know the especially the our disadvantaged senior citizens uh, who have to live in old age homes senior citizen homes i think the quality of care that are uh, that is there at the senior citizen homes is something that should concern all of us and we should make efforts to make improvements in that health is as you mentioned is one of the top needs of the elderly of the senior citizens and particularly i think you highlighted the case for uh, older women and uh, we we see that you know the femini- as we say the feminization of aging in the sense old women live longer and women are tend to be you know living you know single you know alone after a certain number of years uh, and that is uh, you know along with the various challenges that they face it gets multiplied even more so how can the society uh, you know care for the older women uh, much more and prioritize their needs is something that you mentioned thank you thank you mr shridhar uh, you. ashwini you know the technology is obviously very fascinating the platform that you have put together is exciting uh, and obviously there will be interest to know uh, by members that how do you get on to this platform so one of the question that came is that how does someone get on to the platform what does it take you know are, do you have some qualifications do you have something that that you know one has to do mm. Thanks, Rohit, and, and and that gives me a platform to advertise. So lovely, uh, we'll, we'll use that. So there are two ways to get onto the platform. There, are, firstly, there are no filters. Uh, it's on the internet, so anybody can log in and 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 get onto the platform, attend the classes, connect with people. Uh, it's it's filtered automatically in a very different way. Our teachers, who we call guides, they are all from the same cohort. Minimum qualification of being on that is minimum fifty five. Uh, most of them tend to be above 60 they want to kind of teach our yoga teachers our pilates teacher our, our language teachers they're all all in the same cohort as a 30 year old you can join that any ever sure enough but then you'll feel like crash get crashing a teenager's party because the entire model our guides also go through intensive training uh, in terms of being able to first use technology because they're coming from the similar generation not everybody is is a click away at the same time using the technology keeping in mind that the other person on the other side from their own cohort so their content delivery and their interact interactivities all of them is paced to make everybody feel hospitable that's the values to get out of the platform it's www.getsetup.in get set up is g e t s e t u p and there's a phone number i can i can put that on the chat right now and it's a white glove service somebody will walk you through even if you have as long as you have the other qualifications since you said as long as you have a smartphone which again with you know the tailwinds in the telecom industry have helped us uh, most people should have and if they have uh, then it's very straightforward and our, our customer service can can take care of that so Thank the you. number is numbers at the end of the slide but i'm just putting that in the chat while you go on to the next question yeah yeah thank you thank you uh, shuni so i'll i'll 
Now switch over to our next speaker. We'll come back, Ashwini, take some more questions later. Uh, uh, Dr. Huma, are you, uh, are you, can we, can we see you now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Huma. So our next speaker is Dr. Huma. Let me introduce you, uh, her to all of you. Uh, she's an eminent uh, senior gender and education specialist at UNESCO New Delhi, a multi, uh, the, the regional office for uh, UNESCO in South Asia. She has a PhD and MPhil in regional development applied social sciences with research on educational and occupational paradigms and social and economic policies for women in India. Uh, she did this from Jawaharlal Nehru University in, in Delhi. Her focus is largely in the education sector and, and it's on SDG4, which of course we, we all know it aims at inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong opportunities for all. Uh, she has conceptualized several projects and partnerships, including ones on health, disabilities, and mental health. She's been actively involved in the G20 Education Working Group, uh, C20 on uh, gender equality and inclusion. Earlier, she has worked on a range of issues at uh, Rajiv Gandhi Foundation and Indian Council for Child Welfare and Canadian CEDA. So very eminently qualified to speak on both uh, gender and education aspects and uh, Dr. Huma, we are uh, delighted to have you with us. Uh, UNESCO, we all know, and as we read about it, you know, is a, been a front runner uh, and played a flagship role across countries on the aspect of lifelong learning. So we were hoping to one to hear from you uh, why has UNESCO uh, made this as one of its areas to champion? What was their thinking behind taking this up? What are some of the international best practices uh, and experiences that you think India can draw on? And uh, looking forward again, you know, we we talked about it that it it's something that has been around for some time but not picked up enough momentum. So what do we do to recharge it and and take it forward? So over to you, Dr. Kumar. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Rohit Prasad. Uh, CEO Help Age India, all the co-panelists, online participants for today's event. I hope you can hear me well. Okay. Uh, so uh, I heard uh, this morning, I mean, this um, afternoon, I would say, or uh, a, a lot of context was built by you, Rohiji. And also I heard a significant component or from the field by Mr. Sridhar. And from the technology perspective, I heard uh, uh, a very good uh, uh, input we got. UNESCO, as you know, is largely uh, one of the UN agencies working in education, science, culture, communication, social, and human sciences. And we work through uh, mainly five ways but one of the important ways of working, what we call is through normatives and standards. Of course, we have also advocacy, clearing house, uh, and uh, piloting of few projects and programs. UNESCO also has specialized UN, um, uh, what you call category one institutions. And in today's context, what we are talking about, uh, we have a category one institute called UIL which is called UNESCO Institute of Lifelong Learning, which is in Hamburg. Uh, so uh, coming to uh, you know, today's discussion and the context which you have already set, uh, we know that there's a significant mega trend and what we call it's a social triumph of the 21st century. And that is on uh, or in the context of population aging. And what we see is that the average global expectancy uh, rate uh, of our life has increased. And uh, this has, uh, there has been a significant change from 1960 to the present, wherein we also heard from Mr. Sridhar that he has been uh, exchanging uh, notes with uh, somebody as old as 122, 120 years. 
so this is kind of remarkable. Uh, but overall, what I uh, know of that 90 year uh, is kind of a benchmark uh, or, uh, you know, uh, and especially in the context of South Korea, where uh, we are seeing uh, that longevity is uh, more. And one in six people in the world will be, as we say, over the age of 65, uh, you know, in the coming years. Uh, there has also been two international charters, which I like to share with you, which are kind of guide for countries and member states in creating opportunities for older persons. And these are called the UN Madrid International Plan of Action on Aging, which may be very useful for uh, the participants and the panelists. And uh, the other one is on the World Health Organization's Active Aging Framework, which is equally important. And these strive to enable older persons to con contribute, engage, and benefit from societal developments to ensure that people are able to age actively with security and dignity, as has been said by an uh, earlier panelist. Now, uh, with increased longevity and uh, with the older, uh, uh, what you call, uh, contributors, uh, you know, what uh, we call in our languages active aging. And in order to have you know, contributors or participants in active aging, uh, we call, uh, there's a key, uh, what we call there's a policy framework, uh, which uh, we work around the, in uh, our working. And this looks at, uh, of course, research, uh, you know, on educational gerontology. And also it looks at how uh, continued learning and active aging could be, uh, you know, looked at together. Now, uh, of course, there are definitional aspects, you know, of active aging, uh, which I think most of you know, uh, but uh, there is an educational component also of active aging, and uh, which we call in our context is embracing a culture of lifelong learning, and this is basically kind of a bridge to self-actualize and, and emancipate. Like, you know, there's a very famous saying, all the world is my school and all humanity is my teacher. Uh, I think it's a very uh, important saying and it's uh, very uh, contextual to our discussion today. You also mentioned, Rohit, about uh, this U3A, I think, in your discussion when you were putting the context together, uh, what we call is third age of, uh, of the life course. So this third age, uh, you know, uh, was first founded. There's a university of third age. So there's a lot of research which goes around in this area and which will be useful for participants and uh, organization and institutions which are interested in it. This was founded in 1972, and it's flourishing uh, as an institution operating globally. And it has a top-down approach where the choice of courses and curricula and subjects uh, have been the responsibility of the university academics and directors. It has a French model and may be useful to, for a, uh, participants here. There's also a British version uh, which is called uh, U3A, established in Cambridge in 1981. And uh, this could also be very useful. I don't want to go into details, but just mentioning it for people who may be interested in this um, uh, area. Then UNESCO also advocates with governments to take responsibility because we always consider education as a global good and uh, public good. So therefore, it should be, uh, you know, wherein, uh, you know, we cannot, uh, you know, disregard, uh, uh, you know, uh, our other uh, members, I mean, who uh, have, we have NPE, 
2020, and we look at uh, certain age groups, but as it was mentioned that many of our policies and programs stop at the year 60, and that is not a good approach, and therefore it is important that we create age-friendly environment and ensure opportunities for our older adults also, uh, you know, and therefore, Lifelong learning, as we say, is rooted in the integration of learning and living uh, uh, throughout our ages. Uh, you know, LLL, what we call, uh, is weighed uh, with structural challenges. You, some of you have mentioned already. We know that uh, inequalities, there's exclusion, there's race issues, there's ageism, there's internal ageism, there's poverty, educational attainment, geographical locations, social class, there's gender issues which were mentioned here. There's structural lags which um, uh, inhibit, uh, you know, uh, our uh, older adults in their relationship with the third age learning and inclusive education. We have seen media, uh, for example, a lot of Bollywood films. I could uh, come across six films which I uh, chose to share with you, like Bhagban. There is some kind of story behind and learning there. This Piku, uh, which is uh, worth mentioning, there are age-related issues there. Uh, there's Sharma Ji Namkeen, which uh, also has some issues there. Gulmohar, where are rental issues, you know, where old people don't want to leave their houses, but they are compelled to leave their houses and memories, uh, you know, and they're forced to move uh, their locations. There's something called Ram Prasad Ki Tervi, Love Shuv, Te Chicken Kurana. So in the Indian context, I thought it is worth mentioning and we have a lot of lessons, but if we look at it, we have thousands and lakhs of film on various issues and all. But does our media talk about our mm, the issues of our old people? And I think media is a good medium. And uh, like, for example, Patman was one film which raised the issues around menstrual health and hygiene. And, uh, uh, you know, it was an uh, important dimension, which through the media, it created awareness. So I think, you know, it is that we should uh, uh, look at uh, this dimension and seek support of media to have one page around it maybe monthly, wherein these issues should be raised, not as, you know, what happened in terms of security for uh, the old people, but it should be like a dedicated page on uh, issues like this. And this is one of my proposals, wherein research is something which we have been talking about and what we say institutions in educational gerontology. We don't see many such institutions in India. And therefore that should be like, you know, a kind of a ground and look at the new paradigms and common ground uh, and could be a starting point for uh, for us. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, earlier that we already have uh, certain institutions and organizations which work. But in terms of UNESCO, uh, they are, what we call is that there are four pillars of learning. And what we say is learning to know, learning to do, learning to live together and learning to be. These are basically the four pillars uh, in one of our documents, what, which we call um, uh, the treasures of learning within. Uh, it was in 1996, it has further been uh, revised and these pillars have also been broadened. But what are the core benefits of uh, their lifelong learning? Oh, I'm sorry, just giving a two minute okay. time match. Sure. So uh, there is a like increase in self-motivation. It helps. It helps in creating new goals, uh, you know, and drive for the, uh, for the old people. It creates self-confidence among the aged. It is also growing practical skills like digital skills, like financial skills, like, uh, like many other skills which are required in this age. It is also, uh, you know, how 
there are case studies you know which will help you how to enjoy life after 60 or after retirement how to sharpen your mind uh, you know and do uh, those skills which can sharpen your so that you are not uh, you know uh, uh, fall under uh, dementia or those kind of issues <laughs> uh uh you know uh, become a problem for you how do you invest in health you know so there are a lot of issues like you know you have uh, a life insurance policies but you don't know how you have to really use those so i think knowledge around that i i don't know where i have not gone through the website of uh, uh, uh the previous speaker but uh, i would say that maybe there's lot of a uh, benefit there and i think we need to do uh, some kind of web search and collate these um, uh, institutions but what is more important what we see is that the data has to be proper it is not organized data we have mm-hmm. number of aided but do we have according to the skills or domains they are in do we have uh, uh, you know Uh, uh like uh, uh, what is missing is that we do not have institutions which will back up you know uh, uh, people uh, in this uh, age bracket do we have researchers which will help all and not everybody uh, is highly educated so what is for uh, the ones who are neo literates or who are illiterates what is there for them Thank in you. our context yeah. Yeah. so i think those are the things which we need to really upscale we know lot of methods we know lo- what exists already but i think we need to really uh, make things uh, you know more uh, serious for them like for example uh, one thing if you allow me uh, rohit is for the employment we have employment exchange you know for the young and all but do we have a dedicated employment exchange uh, you know forum mm. uh, for uh, the elderly and aged so i think that those Thank are you. the things which we can uh, create benefits for the elderly thank, thank you. you thank you thank you dr uma i think you uh, you know brought on uh, some new points as well as you raised a lot of questions and i love that because you know you are basically questioning uh some of the aspects uh that we need to all focus on i think you talked about the u3a movement the third age movement and we don't see that in a big way in That's india right. yet but there are a lot of lessons to be drawn mm-hmm. uh you talked about data research education gerontology i wouldn't say it is even in its infancy right now right. so obviously you know it's a lot more to be done and i love the fact that you talked about movies and media as a way yeah. of putting this across more Pro. front and center and and uh, making a stronger case for it because there's clearly it has a human dimension to it and people relate to it more easily so but your you. poll uh, can i just mention about the poll and the second question i felt all the four options were important although you gave one choice uh, yes of course of course yeah <laughs> so we'll we'll we did not uh, rank it but uh, but as you said you know all of them are important so uh, with that uh, looking also at the uh, watch you know i go to sonali and i saw two three questions related to sonali which were uh, around the fact that you know yes we are teaching uh, we are trying to build the learning ability of uh, digital learning skills of seniors but uh, is it something that happens in the same way as adults younger adults learn or it has to be different and i think the as- second aspect was about uh, the risks that seniors carry uh, because of cyber crime uh, because they are at risk uh, higher risk so sonali is my colleague at helpage she is also a, a leader in communications and uh, more recently uh, i would say over the last 5 years she is also leading our digital learning program uh, we do some interesting work there so sonali over to you for sharing your views and thoughts thanks rohit uh, what i'll do is i'll first just show my ppt because i have a lot of thoughts from what i've heard today and uh, we'll get that um, you know once i'm done i'll quickly go through because we're tight of time um, just give me one second yeah can you all see my screen yes great 
Okay, so, um, you know, I mean, for me, uh, and, and, you know, I feel for, you know, generally for senior citizens, you know, it's been, last five years has been a huge amount of learning, you know, uh, you know, me personally and for the organization, because, you know, we've been on the ground interacting with senior citizen associations. Uh, there are about 5,000 senior citizen associations in the country with over, you know, 30 lakh members. And uh, when we talk about learning, you know, we, we invariably look at transformative learning. How does the learning... It's not just about learning the skill, but how does it change somebody's life? Um, I won't uh, talk about the need. I think, yeah, sorry. Yeah, the reality is, you know, I mean, this is something I think we're well aware. I won't sit on it too much. But I think two or three things out of this particular slide that come out to me is that there are only 4% of India's elders that use the internet. And that is startling. I mean, if you don't have the device, you know, it becomes the next step is, you know, it's far away. Right now, the medium is only not there. And, you know, the devices that are there, 60% uh, of them use smartphones. That is the main device. They're not tabs. You know, they don't have really laptops. Some of them do, but largely their go-to device has been, uh, you know, uh, their smartphones. In the pandemic, obviously, you know, we all are aware that and the elders faced the maximum difficulty because they were not digitally uh, connected. They had problems accessing food, going to the bank. They are used to going physically to the bank. So all of that is something that I think just sort of highlighted the need for digital literacy. Of course, something that uh, that has been touched upon. And uh, Mr. Sridhar, I must say that, you know, it's something that you brought out also was that the exclusion of older women, the needs of older women, not just digitally, but otherwise also, you know, it's a section that really needs to be looked at separately and we see that even in our own workshops, we see that, you know, we do have a lot of people who come, but the percentage of women who come turn up at these workshops is, you know, minimal. And we are looking at how do we address this? So uh, that is something I just wanted to point out. We did uh, research this year on women and aging, uh, uh, you know, invisible and empowered, and that really was insightful. Um, the other, uh, I, I think the other uh, thing that came out, if you just look at this slide for one second, if you see the round red that is circulated, where it says that who taught the elders to use their own smartphone devices? And it said really 47%, 46.9% have been self-taught. And that is something that I think is a huge eye-opener in the need and the want to learn. And I think that is that is something that we are aware of. But you know, when you have data to even you know push that point across, it really, really helps. They want to learn. Uh, we're looking at second careers, you know, senior citizens and, you know, uh, uh, Huma, you also spoke about the fact that, you know, uh, in, you know, employment, uh, you know, exchange, or, you know, employment engagement, you know, when we did our survey, we found out that 71% of India's elders were not working, okay, but 36, 36% uh, of the elders were willing to work and 40% of them wanted to work for as long as possible, 40% of them wanted to learn new things. You know, the, the need to learn, learning is so constant. You know, like you said, it's, you know, Rohit, you had mentioned it in your opening slide. You know, learning is like a lifetime. And um, again, you know, access is an issue. When we do our digital literacy classes, you know, we have a checklist. It's literally like a laundry list of what is it that the senior citizens would like to be digitally empowered in. And, you know, we had a big laundry list, but these were the top five demands that came across. You know, was how to use WhatsApp. It's basic, how to use WhatsApp you know, net, net banking, Paytm, booking an online cab and how to pay your bills. So while there is social media, there is, uh, you know, there is, there is YouTube, there is Skype, there is a whole lot of other things. But these were the top five demands that came from the seniors themselves. They said, beta, we want to become independent. And I think that is something, I mean, you know, that really came from the horse's mouth. But they are telling us that you're, you have a great curriculum, but these are the issues, you know, topics that we would like to focus on. I think also what uh, on you know online learning does is uh, you know it beating a social isolation, and the pandemic really really brought that out. This picture that you see here is a concert that we had across our old age homes, um, you know, and we had uh, you know uh, Alka Yagnik had come and uh, you know performed virtually, you know, for our elders across old age homes, uh, you know, in India from Patna to uh, yeah, you know Punjab, you know, it, it was just spread all across, and uh, it just told us you know and. The entire thing was called Kamoshi Khatam. Because especially during the lockdown, the silence was haunting, especially for those uh, you know, residents who were just inside the house, they could not step out. It was not safe for them, you know, from a health perspective. But what do they do? What do they do the entire day? Most of them don't have children. The ones who do have children are living far away. So I think uh, again, virtual, you know, if they were digitally, uh, you know, savvy, and, and this is not just at old age homes, across, 
you know, senior citizens who were living alone, whose children were either staying abroad or living in another state, you know, for them, it be, if they were virtually, you know, savvy, digitally, you know, uh, literate, it would have been far more, you know, easier to bear that loneliness that took place. But, you know, while we talk about, you know, I mean, we are talking about urban elders, we're talking about the middle class, but there is the digital, you know, literally equity, I'm calling it, you know, for rural elders. What does it mean when you, you mean, when you digitally empower a rural elder? It's very different from when you do it for an urban elder. You know, in for, for, for rural elders, it's not just about the learning the basics. It's about accessing their rights. It's about accessing their schemes, government schemes. Some of them are not even aware of. You know, the ones who are aware don't know how to register, don't know how to enroll. You know, and we are running a very robust program, uh, you know, with MetLife Foundation called Project Saksham, which talks about uh, you know, social inclusion, economic inclusion, digital empowerment, which is so critical for the people who really, really are struggling to survive. And one of the main things is that when they are connected digitally, they also get to know, for example, for a farmer, he'll get to know what are the weather conditions, what are the upcoming weather conditions, what is a fertilizer, what is the, you know, uh, you know, organic fertilizer that he can use, what is out there in the market, what is the cost in the market, how do I sell my product? It's not just about being digitally literate. It also directly connects to livelihood. So I think when you digitally empower a rural elder, you know, like the beginning of the slide said, you're transforming a life. This is something that, you know, uh, Rohit also touched upon uh, is, uh, you know, digital safety for training. One of the people in our Q&A, uh, you know, chat box had mentioned that, you know, you know, it's great to be digitally literate, but what about, uh, you know, uh, cybersecurity? A lot of older people today are getting calls, you know, phone calls, video calls, messages, WhatsApp messages, uh, you know, with, you know, unsafe links. And you just click on the link and then, you know, your, you know, your account is hacked, uh, you know, you, or you're blackmailed for that matter. And this is increasingly happening. So, uh, you, know, you know, we are conducting, you know, a digital safety training program called Project Surakshit with Google across the country. And uh, the list of, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, bullets that you see here are some of the topics that we are addressing because this is something that our senior citizens are really, really struggling with. And it's a major concern for them. A lot of them sometimes are even hesitant to even do digital literacy because they're scared. If I, you know, what if I get, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm victim to a crime. So it's very important that literacy and safety, they both go side by side. Uh, this is of course a spread of across, you know, uh, across the board, I'll quickly just snapshot of how our literacy and our safety program is running across the country. We have volunteers, a lot of younger people who are getting involved in this. Uh, and um, so this, of course, are, is, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm just about done. Yeah, with it. I have to and, flag it for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. So I've been flagging. <laughs> so it's my turn now. And this is just what I want you to hear from this uh, lady and one or two other people. Um, just let me know if you can hear the sound. If you can't, please uh, do tell me. Can you hear that? It hasn't started for me. Can you hear the sound? No, Sonali, it hasn't started for me yet. Sorry? It hasn't started yet. Okay. Mm. Can you hear now? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Okay. One, just, just sorry. Just give me one second. I think my, just a little bit of my, uh, my thing is gone on hang. Okay. But, no, uh, I think so. no, it doesn't matter. Uh, but I think, um, you know, I mean, that, that's something that I really wanted to, um, you know, sort of uh, share with you guys for the simple reason uh, that it's tell your story from the ground. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, you'll be able to hear it now. इसकी हमें बहुत ज्यादा जरूरत थी खास तौर से मुझे सबसे अच्छा ये था कि जैसे आपके जो वीडियोस हैं उसमें आप हमको प्रैक्टिकली दिखा भी रहे हो तो उसे हमें देख के समझ आ रहा है और उसको आप फिर मतलब इलैबोरेट करके बता भी रहे हो चीज थोड़ी धीरे समझ आती है पर मुझे अच्छा लगता है सीखना आज हम लोग को बहुत जरूरत है क्योंकि आज जितने स्कैम होने लगे हैं ना मैं खास तौर पे मेरे लिए भी इसीलिए कि मेरे बच्चे अपने पास कुछ नहीं रखते और मुझे फोन को टच करने में किसी भी लिंक वगैरह को बहुत डर लगता है यार जरा सा कुछ और विचारों की अमानत और निकल जाएगी बच्चे तो है हमारे लिए लेकिन इस एज में कुछ सीखे थोड़ा रहे ध्यान तो बेहतर रहेगा जो ये आज यहाँ प्रोग्राम किया डिजिटल मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगा इस तरह के प्रोग्राम हमेशा ही I think, uh, I think, I mean, thanks, uh, Rohit. I think, I think the need of the hour, I'm going to just leave you that, is that what is it that needs to be done going forward? I think Thank educational inst uh, institutions have a role to play. Government has a role to play. CSR has a role to play. 
and we need to make it more and elder friendly i'll uh, i think rohit i'll just stop there i think yes. rohit's out of time right yeah okay thank you thank you sandeep i think the the i think throughout the different speakers you know the different uh, you know when speakers were talking about it i think the the digital was a common thread and i think uh, some of the questions also have come around digital and i just want to mention that you know the aspect about cyber crime is a real risk uh, but the, along with that i think all senior citizens who have joined today will know and understand that there is no way of not uh, interacting or using the technology i think the ability to uh, use the technology safely is also something that uh, we will all have to learn and uh, senior citizens are at higher risk but everybody is at risk and that is something that of course is there i think the way to learn is something that a question had come that senior citizens sometimes take and and the lady you know who's mentioning she said yes i'm slow to learn but but so if we recognize that uh, sometimes senior citizens may require a uh, repeat learning sessions you know the way of bringing them on board may be different from bringing a 25 year old on board and therefore the methodology that we are adopting needs to change and and that's something that we are learning i think the system is learning and we will we will be responding to that the gender dimension is something that uh, you know dr huma is best positioned here to talk about but the it's something that is stark and that's something that we we we, we must focus on uh, there were and i am taking the liberty ashwini with you and mr shridhar and huma for taking another 5 minutes because we we did have i know we are beyond time but we did have a few um, you know hands there and who wanted to share their experience so sonali may, maybe invite uh, a couple of uh, uh, senior citizens uh, that who have raised their hand and who would like to uh, just join in through audio and just share their thought at the you know they've heard a lot of uh, you know points from us uh, but any anybody from the participants whom we want to invite sonali you're on mute yeah um i think rohit uh, there, there there is a question which is uh, which has been put up uh, by uh, mr avinash yes. uh, lakare on uh, how how many uh, you know uh, how many how many senior citizens actually take the digital literacy uh, you know seriously uh, i think uh, he is from maharashtra because he talks about that you know they started but at the end they don't remember what they are taught especially after the age of uh, you know 72 to 75 years you know that that's a question that's come that how i think that's something that which you talked about right now was that you know learning you know takes time and uh, one has to be at it so maybe uh, i would probably address that question since is talking about digital literacy is mm-hmm. that um, besides having a you know a, a session uh, on digital literacy it is very important that you know uh, you have you be in contact with your with your uh, you know volunteer or with the teacher who is teaching if you have any queries especially there is there are online mediums now where uh, the courses are taught online so you know links of that can be taken and you can go home and you know study it at leisure uh, and keep going back to that same point where you know you got stuck somewhere then you are not you know you're out of the class but you still got you know class literally the click click of a button away so i think uh, uh, um, online has that benefit thank you thank you and and uh, ashwini if i may you know you, you put your hand up you know is there you know from purely from your experience of senior citizens interfacing with the platform uh, do you see them you know having any anxiety uh, how they how they cope up with this whole challenge of interacting safely be there any 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 from anything from your experience uh rohit a uh, good question on that and that's what when we started off uh, and that's what you know our, our values we've kept it intact it has to be peer to peer and that's why we make the entire atmosphere trustworthy and hospitable so we did notice initial phases and even now when new members join there are hesitation to deal with technology no doubt we can't take that away uh, and why them with anyone but but they specifically but what 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 our, our teams do is that because of creating that environment the the empathy is important so we guide them through a phase and we've had many 
testimonials and instances where somebody said that I used to feel shy switching on the camera. Now I'm perfectly comfortable. You guys have really helped me out. Not just the login process, but entire journey we handhold till. So the the game is all about empowering and self worthiness. So these two values we kind of and and trust of course around it. And to add to Sonali's point and 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 the question that was asked earlier is is that. In, for members, all the content that is there because of the app, you can attend the class, and once you're there, you know you can come back to it to see and watch what you saw. And we do repeat a lot of these classes, so you do you don't have to if you you've learned something in a physical environment, you can always you know some of, most of these are recorded sessions available for you if you're a member, but a lot of it Sorry. is conducted in a way where you can access it later on. Perfect. So rewind and watch uh, it again. So you can watch it again. Yeah. Thank you, Doctor Huma. Would you have any closing comments? I will summarize. But you know, uh, you know, we had some questions for you on the gender aspect. But if you take a minute to just summarize uh, or conclude, you know, anything that you feel to put out. Hear yes. me? Yeah, now, now better. Me? Yes. Okay. We, 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 uh, yeah. So what I see is that there is a, a lot of scope, uh, you know, and a lot of role which UNESCO can play uh, because we have global examples to share. So that would be very interesting. Uh, what is uh, one of the dimensions which we observed in uh, during COVID-19 was the issues of violence, I think, which uh, has to be addressed. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what Sonali mentioned about apps, I think, like there is Himmat app for women. Mm -hmm. So there could be something like very similar, uh, you know, for uh, the aged also. Uh, so that is there. Um, I have one uh, issue, and I think maybe we can do it on the side with Mr. Ashwini Kapila uh, to well, understand better. And that is that, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the uh, urban um, stakeholders, maybe uh, it's possible that, you know, they can, uh, uh, and also for Shonali, that it's possible that, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can have more people uh, getting on um, uh, and uh, enrolling for your programs. Uh, but what about the rural areas or, and for us in our context, I would say, uh, for the elderly who are not literate, mm -hmm. I think, how are you going to? Yes. So for example, UNESCO, I mentioned the five areas and we use radio community uh, 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 you know, programs also. So can you, uh, would you like to partner and take benefit of that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, skills? Uh, mm -hmm. There are also like, if you're looking at science, then how are you using science as a tool, you know? So what are those tools and instruments which uh, would help us in uh, the outreach, you know, or uh, getting into like, for example, we work in in the area of disability for inclusion. So how do we work with NALCO, aging, hearing impairment, visual impairment? How do you look at the disability component and you do it? We are planning to set up a assistive technology hub. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an organization called NCPEDP and we have designed a yes. proposal around that. So there is a lot of avenue and possibility of partnership. I am first time on HelpAge India, actually. I don't know whether you have reached out to UNESCO earlier. I'm not aware, but not in my memory. Mm -hmm. But it would be good that if we actually, uh, you know, uh, sit around and create some kind of an interagency working group or, a, you know, a, a kind of a working group, which should come out with you know, a proper paper yes. on it around it. Yes. Because see, our role is also through research and normatives and standards, what kind right. of policies and programs. I think there is a lot which we can do together. And the learning with Mr. Sridhar and Mr. Ashwini have uh, can help us, you know, to progress better. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Omar. I think that's a very, uh, you know, uh, tangible action point that, you know, we can take on board and uh, as, you know, UNESCO, has a world of experience. And I love the quote that you gave 
I am forgetting it partly though. All the world's a school and humanity yeah. is the best teacher. I think it's a, such a inspiring quote. And uh, and we would love along with all the stakeholders. ISCON is a very big association, the federation that he leads, bring a lot of inputs to us in our work. Uh, Ashwini and many other technology players are. So we would love to form a group and keep this as a continuing conversation and take forward some of the areas. Uh, Mr. Sridhar, we started with you. I would very much like to uh, close with your final comments as you heard the discussion. Uh, you know, you shared your experience. Yes, sir. In very, in very, you know, in very briefly, you know, uh, what would be your closing thoughts? As as pointed out by our speakers, that there are five thousand senior citizen associations with five lakh membership. So all the five thousand senior citizen associations in India should have daycare centers. So nowadays daycare center the concept is increasing. Mm -hmm. So we provide some uh, little recreational facilities in the daycare center. People will attend daycare centers and they start learning. They they act. They interact with other same age group people and they learn a lot of things. Not only like attending classes, they discuss among themselves by mm -hmm. while involving in the recreational activities. So this learning process, continuous learning process, can also be implemented through. Uh, setting up of daycare centers in every senior citizen organization to some extent Very good. Yeah. we can we can reach the common man in getting proper education for a long life long healthy peaceful life Thank they you. can also be prevented with this uh, diseases like dementia uh, alzheimer's or other uh, problems health problems so thank you I thank you again thank everybody i thank helpage india for organizing this program i thank all the participants for involving themselves, we could get a lot of information, a lot of feedback, which we does not know with the speakers because our this thing is very limited. We are in the field, we are working in the field, so we could get a lot of information from the participant. Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you, one and all. Thank you, thank, thank you. you, thank you, Mr. Sridhar. Thank you, thank Dr. You, Huma. Thank you, Ashwini, and my colleague Sonali. Uh, and thank you to all the participants who joined. Uh, in this conversation, and some of them pose some questions for us. This is a we saw this as a uh, almost triggering something in in the system. We saw this that learning for senior citizens is uh, going to be an important aspect linked to active aging, changing their course of life post sixty. And we saw this that we must trigger the change to look at the ecosystem of learning. And the ecosystem, there are issues, there are stakeholders, and how do we take this path forward? And this was just a starting point. So we welcome Dr. Humas, your thought about uh, a paper, uh, a way to structure our thoughts and put out there for everybody to engage. And hopefully we have been able through this webinar, inspire some senior citizens to, of course, take up learning. Uh, but more importantly, for all of us to come together and, and drive some action in this space. The case is already there. The action is missing. And I think that is where we will all work together. So with that note, uh, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we'll close the webinar now. And we look forward to uh, you know, meeting again sometime soon. Sure. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Take Thanks care. a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.